On this episode of Shasta's Journey, Ronald Ochoa is joining us to share everything that God has done in and through his life and how he is using his Instagram account at God's Holy Scriptures to impact more than a half a million followers daily. And I was actually one of those followers. So I'm really excited to introduce Ronald and for him to share everything that God has done, including being around bad influences and even going through a horrible car accident and what has come through that. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us today, Ronald. Thank you for having me. And once again, like I said, I was one of his many followers that he has. But yeah. for those who don't follow you, what are some posts that they could see at God's Holy Scriptures? Um, some of the posts that they can see are inspiring, encouraging, just uplifting posts to get them throughout the day. Um, other things that I enjoy doing with the account are about three to four times a week. I like uh, making a live video feed, which Instagram just came up with that about a year ago. And so I just like going in there, uh, creating a live video feed, going over you know a few verses, just to get uh, the people going, uh, give them the Word of God. And I mean, it's inspired many, many, many kids. And that's been my goal throughout this whole time, ever since I created the account, to inspire kids and to you know, help them go about their days. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you originally to make this account? Because, you know, social media came about and everybody was putting their selves out there. But what inspired you to put God out there? So what inspired me is actually um, I, was in, I was a freshman in high school and Instagram was brand new. And I had an Instagram, but I would never post anything about God. And one night I'm just... Uh, I'm just on my couch, just looking through Instagram, looking through photos and stuff. And all I can see is literally, you know, just actors, actresses, models, girls, boys, just doing, you know, like worldly things and stuff. I d didn't even catch anything about God. And so from that day, I felt God just pushing me like, hey, create an Instagram account. You have friends that can help you, you know, build your account. You have the potential to do it. I just felt it inside of me. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't uh, create it right away. But, you know, as, as like minutes went by, uh, I just kept feeling like something inside of me, like make it, make it, make it, make it. And until I finally, you know, just decided, okay, I'm gonna make it. So I made it. Um, it was originally named different account. I forgot what it was called before, but I changed it later on to God's Holy Scriptures. And uh, I began, you know, just posting Bible verses. And it just started going from there and I started growing it. So my inspiration was, hey, there's nothing about God I want to do something about it ever since I was little. I always knew who God was and I loved God and I wanted to show others, you know, who God is because it's not, you, you can't see it on Instagram and Instagram was becoming this big platform for many, many kids to, you know, begin coming to and I wanted to build something so kids can go in there and, you know, view God, view what God can do and view what God can do in their lives instead of, you know, seeing all these different worldly posts instead of not seeing what God can do in their life. So. I love that. It's so, so important to listen to the calling that God puts on our hearts because a lot of us ignore it. But if yeah. we ignore it, we could be missing out on the opportunity to impact over a half of a million people. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. it's insane. We really, really need to listen to that calling because yeah. what God can do is totally amazing. Yes. It really, really is. Yes. I wanted to ask you because I know that social media can be very, very distracting mm -hmm. and we can get very consumed by it. Yeah. And do you feel because you have made an account solely designated to God, do you mm -hmm. think that has helped you to really make social media differently than how other people are using social media? Uh, I honestly can say it, it has. I have. Um, I've made a bunch of videos now. Uh, personal videos of me actually speaking and through the live video feeds talking about God and talking about why I created the account, you know, just just talking about, you know, what you should do on social media, what you shouldn't do, what you should post, um, you know, what God can do in your life and stuff and just everything that I've uh, that I've said, uh, the Bible verses that I've shared in the account uh, basically touched kids lives and I've received, I mean, more than hundreds and hundreds of messages from different teenagers, different kids, even married couples, you know, that messaged me like, hey, this post just changed me. Mm -hmm. I've been doing all this my whole life. And that post just, I, I know that God was speaking to me through that post. I know God used you to post that so that he can speak to me. A little bit like general revelation. You know, God's just revealing himself through different, different areas in our lives. And yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And are you solely on Instagram or do you have other accounts that are through um, at God's Holy Scriptures as well? Um, I created a Snapchat for the account. Um, it's not really that big, 
it only gets about like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand views. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, but I just like uh, posting, uh, encouraging, uplifting quotes that I just create. And it's, it's great, too. I've received many messages so well that it's changed some people's lives, helped them in their walk with God, helped them be inspired, helped them get encouraged, which is the most important part, leading them closer to God, and that's what it's been doing. So God has blessed me by allowing me to have this huge platform to help kids like Absolutely. I wanted to. Absolutely. And you were talking about the whole walk. So what is your walk with God? What does that look like? You did mention that you have known God since a very, very young age. Yes. And how did that come about? So ever since I was, I don't even know how old, but ever since I could remember, my parents would always take me to church. Always. They would make me go to church. And sometimes I wouldn't even want to go to church because they would make me. So I'd like be rebellious at church. <laughs> I'd close my ears during uh, service or during the worship and stuff. But I always felt like I wanted to be there, but I just didn't want to be forced. But I actually love my parents so much for actually taking me to church every Sunday because every Sunday I would learn something. You know, it just it built a foundation inside of me to get closer to God, to know God. Because, I mean, we all go through problems even as kids. You know, we go through problems in school and stuff, and we need something. We need an encouragement. We need to know that somebody's there for us when we're going through those issues. And luckily, my parents always taught me, you know, God is always there. And church always taught me God is always there through all of your problems. So I've always known God since a little kid, but, you know, as I continued going through problems in life, I continued getting closer to God. I continued to know, hey, God is there. God is real. God can do so much more in my life than I actually think He can do. So mm -hmm. I, that, that's, that's what I got to say towards that. <laughs> well, along your walk with God, yes. when did you witness the fact that God was always there? Uh, so it was on my way to church one day. I was uh, 11 years old. It was the day of the Super Bowl. I forgot which Super Bowl it was, but uh, it was the day of the Super Bowl. Uh, me and my sister are heading to church together, and my parents are following us behind us. And we're driving this uh, this little car, this like little race car. And so we're just like 30 seconds away from home, and we're getting ready to pass a green light when a car, when this, it was like a truck or van. Don't even remember what it was. They didn't really tell me, but it came and it hit me. It hit, uh, it hit my side, and then the car spun a few yards, and I just remembered like, just seeing like a white light. I'm guessing I was just unconscious for a little bit. And then I woke up. I couldn't breathe. Uh, my sister, I just see my sister next to me crying, screaming at me to get out the car. And then I'm just all dizzy, and I just don't even know what to do. I feel like I'm dying. I couldn't breathe. My leg was stuck because the door was crashed into me. The window had broke on me. And so I'm trying to get out this car, and I'm just seeing my sister continue to cry. And so I, just, I, I ended up crawling out the car on her side, on the driver's side. And as soon as I came out, I felt even more unconscious. I felt like I was dying. And then I touched my face, and all I see is blood all over my, all over my hands, and I see glass coming, coming like... I just see glass all over, the, all over my hands as well, because glass was literally stuck on my face. And... Then I remember seeing this lady come out of nowhere, literally don't even know where she came from. And she said, hey, honey, here's the towel. Put it over your face. And I put it over my face to try to wipe the blood off because I was just, I didn't even know what I was feeling. I was feeling very unconscious. And, but I was smiling the whole time. I was just like, I'm alive. What just happened? I'm seeing the car. The car's totally wrecked. I'm like, how did I come out of this? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting down. My parents are like, crying like are you okay are you okay I'm just like yeah man I'm okay I'm okay and then the ambulance comes uh they take me inside the ambulance they put a ton of shots on me and they're like how are you feeling I'm just like you know what I'm good you know God God is with me God is with me I'm great I'm great you know I was just being so optimistic about the about everything and inside my head I'm just thinking this is God this is God. This is the God that I've been serving my whole life. This is the person who, or this is the being, this is the one who saved me from this. He has bigger plans for my life, and I know it. And I'm only 11 years old, and I know that God has something bigger for me. I know that God, you know, saved me from that car accident, because I know that a ton of people have died in that very spot where I even uh, crashed. A lot of people have died there in that same specific spot. But I came out alive, and it's just, it was a joy. Wow. It was a joy. That's such a powerful testimony of who God is and what He is capable of doing. Yes. How has that experience positively impacted you since then? Uh, it's posit positively uh, influenced me in many ways, such as uh, 
Yeah, it's definitely uh, impacted me creating the account. Uh, has impacted the stories that I said because of uh, that experience that I've gone through, uh, such as you know giving a lot of talks about um, we go through hard, hard obstacles in life. We go through hard things that we don't understand where it's easy for us to say, if God is real, if God really loves us, then why would he allow us to go through that? And you know, me just speaking towards that to other people and telling them, hey, God, God, will, God doesn't always, you know, he, he has a bigger plan. That's what I'm trying to say. He has a bigger plan for our life. We might go through a little struggle or a big struggle in life, but it's to prepare us to get us stronger as an individual. And hopefully later on in life, somebody else is going to go through the same difficulty we went through. But if we get through it, we are able to help them. And eventually they help somebody else. And it's just like a chain. It's just mm-hmm. a chain of just showing others what God can do. Ronald, you really just spoke my heart because the whole point of Shasta's journey is to have individuals come forward who have been through trials and tribulations, which we've all been through trials and tribulations, (laughs) but having the courage to come out and share what you've been through and how God has you know, brought you through that is so inspiring and so inspirational because God is more than capable. Mm -hmm. And if you are more than willing to share your story, you can do that, shastasjourney.com. And when you do that, you have the power to impact so many people. Mm -hmm. And Ronald, I know that you are going to do that through your testimony. And if you guys are inspired, you guys can look him up at God's Holy Scriptures. And I never thought he would write me back, but let me tell you, he did. (laughs) So you may not receive a response right away, but I'm sure he will respond to you. Yeah. How many messages do you get on a day-to-day basis? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't Tons. sometimes I can't. I can't read them all. <laughs> well, I but, bet. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Well, if you are inspired, please let them know because I know yeah. that would be encouragement to yeah. you as well. Yes. And yes. I know that you do so much more than just handle an Instagram account. Yeah. What types of things do you do besides handling God's holy scriptures? Um. So I'm guessing you're saying uh, other than social media? Correct, correct. Um, So what I'm doing now, um, I'm studying. I'm studying uh, to become a therapist. So I'm trying to graduate one year earlier, so I'm taking um, a bunch of classes, more classes than I should, and I'm doing it with God's help. So he can help me graduate fast, go to graduate school and become a therapist because my goal is also to help, you know, as helping kids on social media, yes, but also helping uh, kids and adults in in their life as a therapist, helping them overcome their problems with God. I want to be a Christian psychologist, basically, uh, you know, give therapy to uh, individuals and um, with God leading me and giving them scriptures and, you know, basically doing that type of stuff. So that's that's what I'm preparing myself for. And I'm asking God to continue to help me. And I know that he's helping me and he's, he's been helping me. Amen. So that, that's what I'm doing so Amen. far. <laughs> and through your experiences, how do you plan on using those to, um, you know, go into your job of psychology? Um, well, with all the experiences that I've been through and the experiences that I'm going to go through in the future, because I know I'm going to go through a lot more, uh, hopefully I hopefully those experiences help me help um, my future clients, the future people that I'm going to help because everybody goes through different things in life, but not everybody uh, goes through something that somebody else hasn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that God, you know, brings experiences to my life that are able to shape, to encourage other people that will go through that or that are going to go through that Mm -hmm. so that I can help them because I can understand. Absolutely. What has came out of your account, um, your Instagram account? Like, what opportunities has God presented you from listening to that calling that he had on your life? Oh, a lot. (laughs) So, uh, for example, I mean, um, I've received, uh, from the top of my head, I can remember two, two people that they've messaged me. And they said, hey, I was about to commit suicide right now, but I just saw one, one of your posts, and I know that was God speaking to me, and you just saved my life. God just saved my life. Literally, it was just incredible, you know, just reading those. I mean, it's, it's empowering because, mm-hmm. I mean, what God can do is just, it's crazy what God can do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's literally just, they were about to kill themselves, but hey, one post that just said, hey, God is with you. You're not alone. Hey, you're not going through this alone. God can help you. You know, it's just. It's incredible, you know, what just a few words, a few words from God can do to impact somebody's life. I know, I know. That's well, <laughs> to give the viewers some advice, yes. e- you know, even if they don't have an Instagram account with half a yes. million people, yes. how do they use their social media platforms to glorify God and to bring Him glory? Um, they can just, you know, just 
share a Bible verse with doesn't even matter how many followers you have. I mean, Jesus had 12 followers, but <laughs> he didn't even have a lot of followers. <laughs> amen. <Yeah. laughs> amen. But they could just post a simple post. You never know. If you just have like two, three friends, you never know. One of those friends might actually need to hear those words to actually save their life or to change, you know, whatever situation they're in. So just, you know, post a little verse. Um, post encouraging posts. Um, you know, be careful about what you post as well, because some things could actually, you know, hurt other people and make their days worse, make their lives worse. Um, and above all, um, just show that you love God <laughs> through your Instagram. And I have a question for you, um, yeah. because I'm in the media a lot as well. Yes. But how do you stay so centered? Because it's really, really easy to, you know, put on an act, put on this face mm-hmm. and identity to the public, uh, you know, that you're, you know, a strong Christian follower yes. and that you have it all together. But, you know, behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you know, how are you dealing with that? Like, do you feel that you're as centered as you are, like, when it comes um, to how you present yourself on social media? So, in my live video feeds, I, I've, I've, I've always said, like, hey, my life's not perfect. Hey, I go through problems, too. Hey, I'm, I, know that, mm-hmm. I know that life's not easy. You know, I'm only 19, but, yes, I've been through some things, and I know other people have gone through worse things. But, hey, you know, I'm just a Christian. I know that I'm going to fail. I know that I'm going to continue to fail, and I know that I'm a sinner. You know, I know I fall for things that, you know, that I shouldn't fall for. But at the end of the day, I know that God forgives me. God is a forgiving God. and Thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I know that he's, he's always there for me. And I always tell them, whenever I do a live video feed on this subject, I always tell them, hey, when you go through problems in life, know that God is with you. If you sin, know that God is a forgiving God. You know, just get on your knees and pray to God and ask Him for forgiveness from, your, from the bottom of your heart and try not to continue to commit that sin because, yes, He's a forgiving God, but that doesn't give you the right, you know, to continue to sin and continue doing it knowingly, knowing, knowing that it is a sin. But above all, I, I always say that I know that I don't have it all together because I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think any of us here on earth have it all together, only Jesus. <laughs> well, you are speaking truth, let me tell you. <laughs> what type of problems have you dealt with as a Christian? Uh, you know, some people get wrapped up in this idea and concept that mm-hmm. once you become a Christian, everything is good and everything yeah. is great. And yes, we do serve a great God, a mm-hmm. good, good Father. Yes. But that does not mean <laughs> that we are just all of a sudden not going to be impacted by the world. Yeah. So what things are you still impacted by on a day-to-day basis, even as a Christian and yeah. as a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that's funny. I just literally just made an, uh, just made a video and I posted it on my personal Instagram account where I, I basically t- touched on this topic. And it's basically like, hey, just like everybody else, I curse at times, but I'm still a Christian. Mm-hmm. I, I curse at times, and I and I know that it doesn't glorify God. But hey, it's, it's a habit that I have, and it's a habit that I continue to work on. Though I don't, I don't use you know God's forgiveness as you know a, a free card to continue to curse at times. Um, I do curse at times when I'm around with my friends and stuff. But hey, I instantly feel regret towards it, and I instantly you know even in my head I just say sorry God, sorry God. I'm go- I'm gonna try to be better. Um, other things um, that I go through is like, hey, sometimes, you know, you say things that you shouldn't. You know, sometimes, you know, you just judge a person mm-hmm. and you don't even want to. I mean, I've done it before. I'm not going to lie. I've judged a person just by the way they look sometimes. And I know that it was wrong. And sometimes you, know, you just say things that you shouldn't towards your parents or towards your family or towards your friends. And those are just some of the things that I still, you know, um, have troubles with. But I know that, you know, with God, He's going to help me overcome those problems. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm probably going to continue to do it little by little, but hopefully I stop doing it completely one day. Mm-hmm. That, that's my hope. <laughs> well, guess what? You are not alone. Yeah. And if you are doing any of those things, trust me, <laughs> Ronald and I got your back. You're not alone. Uh, we uh, go through the same thing. You know, yeah. Christians are not excluded from bad things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but guess what? We serve an awesome God, yes. and we have the power to bring everything to God. That's yes. the difference between a Christian and, you know, a, a non-believer yeah. is, is that we can come to God. Yes. But even those who don't believe, mm-hmm. they can make the, um, they can take that opportunity and they can come to God. Yeah. They can. And what do you suggest for people who are dealing with these things, whether they're a Christian or not? Mm -hmm. How do they um, continue to better themselves and, you know, once again, glorify God in everything that they do, whether it is on social media or whether they are behind closed doors Mm -hmm. by themselves? Um, I think the the main thing I could say towards that is 
you need to change your mentality. You need to understand that you can do it. You can change. You need to tell yourself that continuously that you can change. And eventually you will change because you continuously tell yourself that you can. You continue to you know, motivate yourself. That's if you're not a believer. But if you're a believer, um, also change your mentality. You know that, hey, God loves you. God came to earth to die for your sins. He didn't come just for nothing. He came because he knew that you're a sinner. He knew that, you know, if he saved you, you would have a chance to go to heaven. And he wants you to go to heaven. That's God's plan. He wants us all to be in heaven. But unfortunately, it's not always going to happen because unfortunately, sometimes some of us choose not to follow God. But, Mm -hmm. you know, just change your mentality. Understand that God is truly there. Keep going. Even if things continue to get harder, you know, sometimes things have to get harder in order for them to get better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just understand that God has, you know, God just has a greater plan than we think that we have for ourselves or that we think that God has for us. He has something much, much bigger, but we have to continue to have faith and not lose that faith. Mm -hmm. What I always try to remind myself is that in a blink of an eye, Mm -hmm. we could take our last breath or the people around us can take our last breath. And the moment that this really um, became real to me was when my uncle Eric went missing back in 2013 and he was found on the eighth day deceased in a car accident and having him completely disappear you know, out of my life within a matter of seconds. It mm-hmm. uh, really puts things into perspective mm-hmm. that we really have to, we can't take any moment for granted. And yeah. so with the moment that we have right here, right mm-hmm. now, um, what do you, you know, suggest for the followers? Uh, why is right now the perfect time to either grow closer to God or to give God a chance? Mm. So right now is the perfect time because even in the Bible it says that our days on earth are numbered. We don't know when God is going to call us back. We just don't know it. And I mean, you know, we just have to think about, you know, all the shootings that happen every so often. Think about all the car accidents that happen. Think about every single person, little kids, all these bombings that happen. They die in an instant. You know, they didn't wake up assuming that they were going to die that day. No, they probably assumed to, you know, go back to their beds that very night and, you know, to wake up to a new day. And just like them, that could happen to us. That can happen to us at any second. I mean, literally. We can die at any second. Every day, you know, it's, it's a day that we can die. And right now is the perfect time because we don't know when we are going to die. And we want to be saved. We want to show God that, you know, we are for Him and that we love Him. And we have to change because, hey, what if we're sinning at the moment? What if we're sinning at the moment we're living with the world and, you know, God takes our life away right there while we're living with the world? Where do you think our soul is going to go? And that's why right now is the perfect time to change, to change your ways. That's so true. That's so true. We're actually going to have a part two with Rommel joining us on set once again on Shasta's journey. And we're going to be discussing the importance of not waiting to the new year to become a better self, you know, better you. um, But really, you know, right here, right now is the right time to grow closer to God and become a better you. And we're going to be discussing that. So, you know, please check that out and uh, continue to stay tuned and follow Shasta's journey. And also, do not forget to check out at God's Holy Scriptures. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. (laughs) You'll be happy and grateful that you are following him, so you will have positivity in your news feed, let me tell you, Uh, because there's so much negativity and just things like, I I know I was following over 3,000 people at one point, and I went through process, and I'm only following about 100 people now of people who I know that when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed, I know that I am feeding my soul good things. And is that kind of what you do as well? You're really cautious about what you do on social media? Um, Yes, and... uh, I also, I also talk about that as well. I mean, hey, if you're following people or if you're looking at negative things, it's going to influence, you know, your, your everyday life. You know, if you're seeing posts that are, you know, are just, you know, bringing other people down, you know, uh, just negative posts, you're going to eventually let that influence you. You're going to eventually, you know, tie into those things. So it's better to, you know, just look at positive things. Look at positive things. Stop following things that aren't good. Because if you're following all this encouragement, all this inspiration, you know, it's going to eventually play a part when you're going through obstacles in life. You're going to feel encouraged by the things that you have seen. And it just plays a huge role. I know how that is because it's really hard to be angry or mad or sad or, I mean, well, okay, 
you can be sad. But yeah. listening to Christian music and, mm-hmm. and just positive music, it's so hard to be in that negative mindset when you're just like being fed and yeah. like so much positivity. And the reason why I said the whole crying thing is because sometimes those songs make you emotional. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it happens. Yeah. So yeah. You know, being sad is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, I yes. believe God did give us emotions yes. and it is what we do with those emotions. Yes. And, and just like, you know, um, the thoughts that go in our head, we mm-hmm. can't always control the thoughts that go in our head. It's true. But it's, it's what you do with those thoughts. Yeah. And I, I'm sure you have those thoughts yourself where you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I really shouldn't be thinking that right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what types of things do you do behind the scenes in your day-to-day life that really helps you to grow closer to God and really put Him first? So some of the things that I do on a day-to-day basis, um, sometimes I just like hanging out with my friends, being, you know, uh, together, being with being with my group of friends, uh, you know, just sharing with them, talking with them, you know, interacting with them. Uh, other things that I enjoy doing uh, is I'm in a soccer team now. Well, I used to play soccer a lot my whole life, but then God was slowly calling me out of it, <laughs> taking me somewhere else. That's a different story, but... Um, <laughs> So I play soccer um, with my friends. Um, I enjoy being at home with my parents, uh, you know, just hanging out with them, talking with them. My mom's always reading some Christian book, always reading the Bible. She's always on a day-to-day basis, you know, showing me different things that she learned. And, you know, that's another big influence from me, especially my mom. I mean, she built that foundation within all my uh, sister and brother to always know God. She just gave us so many verses, talked to us so much about God talked about her story, talked about my dad's story. And I mean, I guess it all starts also within the family, within your parents. If your parents are going to shape, uh, if your parents, you know, bring the word of God to your home, if they bring the word of God to home, uh, it's going to eventually influence the people living at home. Mm-hmm. And that's that's some of the things that I do out, outside of what of what I usually do. Awesome. <laughs> and you know, not only that though, but you were, you know, mentioning that it really starts in the family. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to encourage you guys that even if your parents aren't believers or mm-hmm. not, you know, positively influence you in that area, I know that I was one of those um, young children who really wanted to seek out God, but I wasn't getting that uh, from my parents. And so you, you can be that person that brings it to your parents and brings it yeah. into the family because I'm a living testimony of that. So, and if you're a parent and you have not been living a life that's glorifying to God and you are not, you know, being that person that you want your kids to be, it's never too late. And we're going to be talking about in the next episode, how to really stick to your goals, Mm -hmm. you know, through the grace and faith of God. And uh, it's going to be awesome. So please check it out. And, um, you're, you've been great, and I just want to thank you so much. We're actually running out of time, but okay. um, do you have any other advice for uh, viewers? Uh, you seriously have so much encouraging words to give out. If you guys want to go ahead and check it out on his personal account, which we mm-hmm. didn't put it up, but it's at, uh, at Ronald, Ronald period 1998. 1998, and you can check out even more um, personal videos that Ronald mm-hmm. does, um, just encouraging words. So if you want even more encouragement, Mm-hmm. Don't forget to check it out. Yes. <laughs> and we are running out of time, um, mm-hmm. but I just want to thank you so much for being on the show. And if you thank want to you. say anything else, feel free to. Um, I just want to say, you know, just follow God. Follow God every single day, even if things get, even if things get harder. Continue to follow God because eventually your breakthrough is going to come. God's going to see your loyalty to Him. God is going to see how faithful you are to Him. And God is going to bless you, you know, abundantly. You're going to see so many blessings. Even if you don't see Him at the moment, you need to understand that sometimes we're not going to understand why we're going through things at the moment. But one day we will. And that's what I want to say. Amen. Thank you so much, Ronald. I enjoyed having you on the show. And thank you so much for watching and following Shasta's Journey. May God bless you in everything that you do. And please feel free to share your story at Shasta'sJourney.com or look us up at Facebook.com slash Shasta's Journey or on Instagram or YouTube or whatever you want. And seriously, just be blessed and hope you guys have a great time doing whatever God calls you to do. God bless. Thank you.